All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to discuss neutralization reactions and the products that they form, mainly salts, and we're going to look at pH of salts. Now, what is a neutralization reaction? It is a reaction, of course, of an acid and a base, and what we form is this product, which is salt and water. Now, H's, of course, give us H+, because their pHs are less than 7, and bases provide a hydroxide, because their pHs are greater than 7. And when H plus and OH minus combine, they form water, which is our neutral product. And hence, that's why it's called a neutralization reaction. But don't forget, water is not the only product that's formed from a neutralization reaction. What else is formed from a neutralization reaction is salts. And salts, as you know, are composed of a cation and an anion, some sort of an ionic substance would be considered to be a salt. So in order to determine something about that salt, we would have to know something about what formed it, meaning if we know a little bit more about the acid and the base that formed the salt, we'll know a little bit more about the salt itself. Now salts, you cannot assume, that are going to have a pH that is neutral. Salts have their very own pHs, meaning that you can have indeed a pH that is equal to 7, which means that you have a neutral salt, but you could also have one that is pH less than 7, an acidic salt, and you can have one that's greater than 7. That's a basic salt. So let's take a look at an example of a neutral salt. So what we're going to do is apply the same principles as you would maybe in genetics of crossing two parent compounds, for example, an acid and a base, and what would the offspring would look like, which is this salt here. Taking an example of, let's say, a red rose and a white rose, if you were to cross those, the resulting rose would resemble the more dominant parent. So if the red rose was a dominant trait, of course the rose that would be produced from that crossing would be red. If white was more dominant, then of course the resulting rose would be white. And if they were equally dominant, it might blend together, and instead of red and white, we would get pink. So we're going to take a look at the parents, the acids and bases, and the offspring, the salts, in the very same way and see if we can predict what the salt would be if we know a little something about the acid and the base that have produced it. So looking at this strong acid here and the strong base, if the acid and base are both strong, meaning they're equally dominant, they will each contribute equal amounts of H plus and OH minus, therefore forming what we would count, what we would say is a neutral salt. Because they are equally strong, equally dominant. So you can see what we mean here by this red sphere and this yellow sphere. And red and yellow, when combined, of course, blend together to make orange. And that's why you can tell this example would be one where the acid and base are equally dominant, equally strong, and therefore you will indeed produce a neutral salt. Let's take a look at an example of that. So NaOH, for example, would be your strong base, HCl would be your strong acid, and you would form water from H and OH, and the resulting salt would be NaCl. The Na and the Cl are your two components of the salt. The Na coming from the strong base, the Cl from the strong acid, and since this is the product and it came from these two parent compounds, it should reflect them, and it does. Because they're equally strong, the salt also equally represents them. What if, though, we have a scenario where one of our acids or bases is stronger than the other? So let's take a look at this example. Here we have a strong acid pairing with a weak base. So what we end up having is strong acid and a weak base. We are going to end up with a salt that will resemble the more dominant parent. In this case, if it's, an, if it's a strong acid, then your acid is going to influence the salt more so than this weak base because the strong acid will overpower it. So indeed, we will get an acidic salt here. Now, let's look, take a look at an example of that. A strong acid, HCl, is as good as any. A weak base, let's say NH4OH. 
And if we have H and OH, of course, combining to form water, what happens to this salt? The salt that's formed makes NH4Cl. The NH4 comes from a weak base, right? This guy right here. The Cl comes from this strong acid, this guy right here. And the strong acid overpowers this weak base, making an acidic salt known as ammonium chloride. Looking at the graphic, you've got a purple sphere for the strong acid, a very light, let's say, blue sphere for the weak base. What does this salt represent more? What color is it closest to? Well, I would say this is a pretty bluish purple color, but it's much closer to the purple color range than it is to the blue. So the salt actually reflects this acid more so than the base. And rightfully so, because the acid is a stronger trait. Conversely, if we go down here, we've got a weak acid and a strong base. So when a weak acid and a strong base combine, the base is more dominant to the acid, thereby making a basic salt. Looking at the graphic, light blue here is the representative for the weak acid. The strong base is a nice bright green, and the resulting salt is a combination of the two, of course, but it resembles the influence of the strong base, much more so than the acid. Therefore, it does show its influence from the strong base, meaning that we're, of course, we're forming this, the basic salt. An example of that, we need a weak acid. Let's try acetic acid, CH3COOH, and a strong base like NaOH. What are they going to form? Well, H and OH, again, makes water, and we know we're going to form water. But what about this salt right here? Well, that salt is going to be CH3COONA. This salt is going to be basic. And again, how you'd look at that is the sodium and the acetate ion. This sodium must have come from NaOH, the strong base. This acetate may, must have come from this acetic acid, the weak acid. A weak acid, strong base crossing, of course, will lead you always to a basic salt. So again, look at the influence, either the colors, the little equations here, the examples, and that should give you a good indication as to what your salt is going to be. A good hint is always to start with the salt you're given because a question will likely ask what kind of salt is this? Is this an acidic salt or a basic salt or a neutral salt? And you will be left with nothing but the formula of the salt itself. So most likely you will have nothing but let's say NaCl and you're going to ask or be asked to select from a pH of 7, greater than 7, or less than 7. So you're going to have to break it down. So again, the best way to approach this, a good hint, is to look at the salt itself and break it down into its two components, Na plus and Cl minus. This Na came from something and the Cl came from something, right? This is the product, the offspring. From what two parent compounds did this offspring come? must have been an acid and a base. So an acid produced it and a base produced it. Sodium is a plus, so it should have paired up more likely with the hydroxide, right? A plus and a minus attract one another. So one of the parents must have been NaOH. The Cl has a minus, so it must have paired up with a positive charge like this H plus. That must have been from an HCl. Now that you have worked backwards, essentially, and found the two parent compounds, the strong base and the strong acid, you can go back and say, okay, I get it. This must have been the strong acid, strong base pairing, and that's why I have a neutral salt. And you would do the same thing with the other examples. You would come down and say, I have NH4Cl. NH4Cl is my salt. It came from NH4 plus and Cl minus. Again, your two choices for parent compounds are H plus and OH minus. NH4 plus pairs with the OH, the Cl and the H get together, and you've got NH4OH, which was this, 
and HCl, which was this. Again, strong acid, weak base, you'll get an acidic salt. And last but not least, let's take a look at this sodium acetate. Break it down, CH3COO minus and Na plus. Your choices, once again, are either the H plus or the OH minus. These are your only two parent compounds, right? So where did this salt offspring come from? Acetate is a minus. It must have paired up with the plus. That would have given us CH3COOH. This OH minus must have paired up with the plus of the, of the sodium. Again, pluses and minuses, right? That's how we form a compound. Unlike charges, you've got NaOH. This is a strong base, this is a weak acid, and a weak acid strong base combination or cross will give you a basic salt.